speak because I don't think I can see everybody on one screen anyway. Greeting from, a greeting from Norway, perhaps. Can Thank you. you. This me? is uh, Torbjörn speaking, right? Uh, I'm sorry good. if I pronounced that wrongly. <laughs> Thank you. No, I fine. Just uh, appreciate your tour there. Uh, I've had a lot of fun for from the QCX, as uh, you might have seen with this little 3D printed version. Yeah, that I remember I that. Carry video. around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I much appreciate that you're taking off the QCX Mini. Mm -hmm. uh, for one thing, all the experimentation, you can do that. And I can fit two of them in maybe in my pocket. Uh, but the interesting thing I see about it is that it will also be more accessible to beginners. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually working nationally to see if we can establish something like the uh, foundation license of the UK in Norway. Uh, mm -hmm. It remains to see if we'll be successful with that. But I'm also engaged in volunteer work to bring programming to children. Mm -hmm. And I see a potential to follow up by pushing uh, amateur radio to, to high school kids. Um, I don't know if we'll get that far, but I, I am pushing in that direction and we'll see how far we get. So okay. uh, in that work, uh, your kids are a great asset. So I just want to thank you for that. Thank you very much. And, you know, if there's anything I can do specifically, then send me an email. Um, if anything I can do to help. And uh, certainly I wish you good luck on that. Um, yeah, the QCX Mini, I just say a word about that because there are quite a few people here and some people might be interested to see what I have in mind. Um, so the original QCX, probably most of you are familiar with, is, is this is a defective one with the LCD removed and some of the components removed, but you'll, have, you'll recognize that. And it was that many people have produced different enclosures for that because I never uh, produce an official enclosure, but many people will be familiar with this enclosure, which was uh, designed by uh, Baumatech company in Germany, and they produced lots of nice uh, turned shaft extenders to overcome the fact that on the original QCX, I had the buttons and controls and the LCD all at different heights. So they overcame all of those problems in this um, aluminium enclosure. And so many people will be familiar with this one and probably many of you actually have this. The QCX Plus was my attempt to overcome some of these limitations and I designed it so that the buttons, if I look from, I'll try and get it into the right place. So I look from the side here, you can see that the buttons and the controls and the LCD are all in the same plane and suitable for putting a inside an aluminum enclosure. And so because of that, I was able to offer a very convenient extruded aluminium enclosure with a cut, drilled, printed front panel and rear panel. Um, the rear panel has all the connectors and the front panel, the controls and the LCD. And the two slot together, the two parts of it slot together with uh, a, a row of uh, pin header connectors. So I was able to also make the PCB more than twice as much surface area. So it actually makes the component density much lower than the original QCX. So the circuit is the same, the firmware is the same, the operation, the performance, everything about it is the same, but it's a larger PCB with less dense component packing. It makes it easier to construct. This was met with mostly uh, a lot of approval uh, most people were very happy about the changes and uh, I was also able to incorporate some additional change, some additional options such as this development board um, which slots in at a 12 meter height and can be bolted in a 12 meter height above the main board and is just a matrix board with some uh, connection points at locations on the board which match up with pin header pads on the main board at strategic locations, uh, such as the output of the IQ um, preamplifier and CW filter and all of these things. So I really tried to make it as modification friendly as possible and with this dev board that people can fit their own modifications on top. As well as that, there's the option of the, um, there's a TCXO option. Um, you can see here this tiny TCXO board 
which replaces the normal 27 megahertz crystal. And these changes, and particularly the um, enclosure, and although I have 500 of these enclosures here, they're all outside my front door waiting for my useful, strong young man to arrive on Monday morning and carry them up to this attic. So I can't actually show you a Q6 Plus in the enclosure because the only, ver only one of them I had that was built here, I sold it to someone who was urgently in need of it. So, but anyway, you have, yes, you see someone here, John, John KG7DC is showing us his one. Um, so I don't know how many of you can see that. But it's a very beautiful enclosure um, that's very well produced and, and uh, very high quality and fits the unit very well. So most people have been very enthusiastic about this development, but there were some people who said, well, the, the size is inevitably, the larger size is not so suitable for backpacking and for social operations and portal operations, things like that. So what I decided to do as a result of that, there were two options. One was bringing back the original QCX and I, didn't, I decided I didn't really like to sort of go back on things that I'd already come forward on. And so the other option was to design an SMD version of the QCX um, and make it as small as possible, as miniature as possible. So what I've decided, I've got here an extruded aluminum enclosure and the extrusion is the same you see, I never remember where the camera is on this iPod, but the extrusion is the same extrusion that's used in the 50 watt power amplifier kit. And in the 50 watt power amplifier kit, which I also don't have any here to show you because I had sold my only prototype of that. And so again, I have 200 of these, but they're outside my front door waiting for that strong young man to come on Monday morning and bring them up to my attic. Not that he knows about that yet, but this extrusion is the same extrusion used in the 50 watt power amplifier. And I have a plan to be able to squeeze the QCX into this. So you can see here, this is the, this is the Bamatech enclosure next to the planned uh, QCX mini enclosure. And you can see that it is quite a lot smaller. It's um, the, the volume enclosed is actually two point, more than 2.5 times less than the volume of the Bamatec enclosure. Um, it's also quite a bit uh, thinner. You can see it's uh, 25 millimeters height, uh, 86 millimeters wide, and 63 millimeters high here. So you can see it, it's, it's actually, you know, whereas the QCX Plus is about two and a half times greater volume than the QCX. The QCX Mini is about two and a half times smaller volume than the QCX. And so as far as backpacking is concerned, it will be lighter, it will be smaller. Um, I've decided to use the same 1602 display. So I'm very keen that this should not be a product which takes up a huge amount of development time and it should use the same firmware that the QCX uses and the same circuit that the QCX uses because I don't want to spend a large amount of time developing this. I just want to do a new PCB layout, a new mechanical design, and a new manual, and, and, and. So yes, okay, so it's not a trivial project, but it is hopefully not an enormous project. So I'm going to use the same 1602 display. While you can get smaller displays, I think for many of us, uh, squinting at a very small text font is something we don't want to do, particularly if we're outdoors and portable. Um, so I want to keep the same display, which is quite readable and large. But I am going to change to the yellow-green type of display. I do have one here somewhere, but not exactly sure where. And the yellow-green display has this feature that when you switch off the backlight, it's still very readable in, in strong lighting, particularly in outdoor lighting and sunlight. The, the, the LCD with the yellow green backlight is very, very readable. And so I will try to incorporate into the firmware some, and uh, on some small circuit change to be able to switch on or off the backlight. And switching off the backlight saves about 30 milliamps of current construction, current consumption, which is also quite significant uh, for portable operation. Additionally, on the QCX, 
the six op amps in the QCX are all the same LM4562. The LM4562 is a high performance operational amplifier with a very high specification and a low noise figure. It's about 2.7 square uh, nanovolts per square root hertz noise figure, input, input voltage noise. The performance is determined by the first stage, which is IC5 here, um, the first stage after the quadrature sampling detector. After that, the performance of the op amp is not really necessary. And all of these subsequent five op amps don't need to be such a high performance operational amplifier with such a high current consumption. So I will use an operational amplifier which has a lower current consumption than the LM4562. And that will also drop the current consumption, which is good for portable operation. So with these changes, and you know, hopefully with the same um, LCD which is being used, and I will use the same um, arrangement of um, uh, knobs in the same type of style that we have on the QCX with the two buttons and the gain control knob, minimal changes so it doesn't become enormous project which competes with other important projects. Um, such as QSX. Um, hopefully this will be a very nice small version of QCX. All the SMD components will be factory assembled, um, so there will be no SMD soldering to do. Um, in general there will be a lot less soldering to do than there is in QCX because of the fact that most of the ICs, resistors, capacitors will be SMD and will be soldered by the factory in pre-assembly. The constructor is still going to have to uh, uh, solder the toroids, wind the toroids, solder the toroids, uh, solder the connectors, the display, the buttons, because all of these will be through hole components. So there is still work to be done. It's not like it's a zero work kit. Um, but again, again, I think we will offer these in an assembled version as well as a kit version. Uh, the price of the QCX Mini, I think, should be very similar to the price of the standard QCX Plus. Um, same, not, not, a, not an increase in price. Um, the assembly fee for the assembled version of it will probably be less than the $45 assembly fee on the QCX Plus, simply because there's less assembly work to be done. Um, a lot of it has been done already. So... It will be very compact inside, you know, really, this is a really small, you know, you can see when you look at it compared to my hands, it's a really, really small QCX, um, a really, really small version. Even the original QCX is quite a small box, but, you know, look, the new one is less than half the size. In fact, it's 2.5 times smaller volume when you take into account, of course, the uh, smaller thickness as well. So. That's the plan for the QCX Mini. I'm hoping it won't be a very, very long development project. Uh, famous last words, of course. Um, nothing is ever as quick as it seems like it should be. But, um, you know, I have some experience of doing this for the QCX Plus. The QCX Plus was also no circuit change and no firmware change compared to the original QCX. It was just a matter of uh, the PCB layout and choosing the components correctly and the, everything correctly to be able to fit it into the enclosure. So it involves a few rounds of prototyping and making sure that everything fits together properly, but it doesn't involve a huge firmware development project or a huge hardware development project or anything like that. So hopefully it should be a reasonably quick process. Um, as I mentioned just now, I will try to incorporate the issue with the requirements for the um, SSB variant of this as well. So, yeah, that's about all I have to say about the Mini. Um, uh, anybody else have any questions? Yes, we have Armand and Carmel there. Sorry, can I, KG, the, can I come the back? Is the Mini going to be the same output? It's going to be what? the same output power? Yes. Okay. And in the Mini, I'm intending to use the same PA arrangement that I used in the QCX Plus. So... In the Q original QCX, the three power transistors are on the back edge here. They are vulnerable to overheating in some situations, particularly if you tried to do five watts of whisper. 
which is a quite long key down period of almost two minutes, these transistors were liable to overheating. In the QCX Plus, I arranged it so that these final power amplifier transistors are lying down flat on the board and the board is acting as a heat sink and they're bolted onto the board with this 12 millimeter diameter washer. It's about half an inch in American uh, imperial sizes. And so I will try to do the same thing in the QCX Mini. So it will have the same five watts power output, but it will hopefully be more robust than the QCX was because of the heat sinking of the uh, final transistors. Okay, now Hans? I heard somebody else, yeah? Hans? Yes, uh, qu question, question about Daniel. the processor. Are you going to use the same uh, DIP chip or are you going to use a SMD chip? I'm going to try to use the same DIP chip. And that is in spite of the fact that it uses a very large volume because it's uh, 0 0.1 inch pins and there are 28 of them. So you're talking about 1.4 inches by 0 0.3 inches for the chip, plus the height of the socket that it goes into. The reason why I would like to continue to use the same DIP chip, even though the SMD chip is a fraction of the size, is because not everybody has the programming hardware or the wish to have the programming hardware to do firmware updates. Some people like to just buy the chip and slot it in. So I'm going to try to use the DIP if I can fit it in the volume, but it is quite bulky. I, I've been thinking about this in the last few days and I believe it's possible to use the DIP version of the chip. Thanks. 